Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how I carve the the seat and uh, sort of here's the seat contour right here that I have have drawn. And uh, let me see, where's my glasses? I got there. They are. Right here. Okay, now I can see. Oh yeah. So zeros up here, <clears throat> and we're dropping down in eighth in eight inch increments on this thing to where we go pretty close to an inch. That's the seven eighths ring right there, so 15 sixteenths to an inch, something like that. And uh, I'm going to do it all just with a scorp on the concave part, and then the outside part will all be done with a draw knife. And once again, this is an exercise with your, with your tool. You're just pushing that scorp to its, to its limit. Of all the tools that I use um, in this series, uh, and I call it the Democratic Chair because I'm eliminating, you know, as many tools as possible and trying to give it access to the largest portion of the population. Uh, but of but of all those tools, the kind of the the least democratic of them <clears throat> would be the scort because of its expense. Uh, but you got to have something to carve the seat out with, and you could certainly use a large gouge if that's what you have. If you've got an adze and you're good enough with it then you could do an ads all the way. I've seen seats that were done completely with an ads and they're pretty neat. I, I don't know that I'm that good with one. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, but the, so if you're carving a softwood seat, the scorp can do it from start to, to finish. And once again, it just makes you get that scorp even sharper than maybe you've ever gotten it and push it past the point of diminishing returns. <clears throat> the draw knife would be the same thing, trying to get these finished cuts with the draw knife and maintain those lines and make those lines pristine because that's what makes the chair really pop is holding, holding those lines with your, with your knife. And uh, <clears throat> let's see, uh, uh, right over here, right, so we Last video, we planed the seat blank, <clears throat> bored and reamed the post holes, and now getting ready to carve the top of the seat. Well, let's just move to the seat then. Okay, well the first thing I do on most of my seats when I carve them is <clears throat> I leave the whole blank square and then I carve out the bowl and then I saw out the front and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, <clears throat> on this one, what I do is I carve the bowl all the way out <clears throat> and carve it down to where I'm three quarters of an inch from the bottom. And, <clears throat> uh, well, actually, that's wrong. Let me back up. I carve it out to where I am about seven sixteenths from the top with the carving and that's where this line is going to be. It's somewhere around 3 8 or 7 16 below this surface up here. Then <clears throat> I'll take the draw knife and mark up 3 quarters from the bottom and bevel that off to that line. But that means that I have to carve all the way out. I have to get a line out there to be able to carve all the way out. Well in order to get the line <clears throat> I gotta saw this out. So here's where I kind of hit a dilemma by trying to limit my tools, okay, is sewing out the seat. So sewing was a development that happened, you know, they had saws during the Windsor chair period, of course, but uh, <clears throat> in 18th century. But, you know, axes and etc. predated saws quite a, quite a bit. Um, and uh, so saws were kind of sophisticated things. Now, when I first started making chairs, I did not have a band saw. And I made chairs for 10 years, made 500 chairs, probably, without a band saw. Uh, and then I got a band saw. <clears throat> and my bow saw that I used for all those years, not only got put to the side and never used, but I couldn't even find it when I got ready to do this. So I started looking back months ago. So my buddy Alia found 
um, this one in the junk store uh, and gave it to me. Now, I haven't used it. So, now, so I had this blade sitting around from, oh gosh, I, I guess the last time I used the bow saw was uh, probably uh, 90, uh, 93 or 94, somewhere along through there, I guess. Yeah, that would have been it. Yeah, used, used it for 10 years. Now, I sawed out a lot of seats with bow saw, and I got pretty good with one. <clears throat> but this may be a disaster. I haven't, I mean, it's been... 25 years since I've used one of these. So we'll see. Now, <clears throat> if you've got a bandsaw, then of course saw it out with a bandsaw. If you don't have a bandsaw or a bow saw, you could actually take just a panel saw, just straight panel saw, and you could do a series of cuts, and then you could do the rest with the, uh, with the draw knife. And that's really a fairly efficient way of doing it. It's not, not bad at all. Uh, okay. Well, with all that talking done, I was trying to avoid using this thing since I might embarrass myself, but we'll see. Okay, so let's see. So you use your whole body with it, as, as I remember. Try to use the whole blade. I'll be out of breath by the time I get finished this. <clears throat> and I used to be able to control this even better than the than the bandsaw. And but obviously right now I'm getting a little wave to it. I'll straighten it out with the drum. Out. do is I'll drill a, a depth hole and uh, <clears throat> you know I'll typically use a, a twist drill with a egg beater drill but uh, just trying to use what I've already introduced we used a half inch auger to drill that with you can drill a depth hole with that just make sure you're counting your uh, the tip of the, the lead screw there as part of your depth so it's going to go about 15 16 it's three and a half inches in um, or you know, you just look at the contour map and bore wherever you want according to that map. So let's see, hard to see with the tape. And then the chips push the tape up and you're liable to go too deep. <clears throat> Okay, now I got the score. I'm going to go cross grain with it. And of course, every way you cut right now is going to be uphill on one side and downhill on the other side. So you're going to tear over here on this side and get a clean cut on this side. So you're going to have to do a little bit of that right there. And you create a trough. And now, you can start at the bottom of the trough and work your way up like that and you're always cutting downhill or most always you know you're tearing out some on the other side The, uh, that's my vice. That's what's rattling. There we go. So right over in here and over in here are 
two of your most difficult spots. Uh, it's where this converges with it carving that way and you end up definitely having to carve cross grain there. I usually will dig a little trough over there and there we're ready. And then I can come around this side and when you so if you're going to be using just the score you want to be able to hug that line as good as you possibly can. The way you'll do that is tuck your elbows in, locking your shoulders, your wrist, and your elbows, and using your body to pull it back, and then slightly moving your wrist to dial it in. And you can just get right up on that line and just nail it just about perfect like that. Now when you're carving, <clears throat> make your depth hole the deepest part at any time during the process because if you get deeper out here, which it's easy to, then you're going to lose your reference point here. And you can go too deep out here pretty, pretty quick. So always come back to your depth hole and make it uh, the deepest part. So I just got to the bottom of the depth hole right there. And so you could take a pencil if you want and know that you really don't want to go much deeper than what you got right there. So I'm going to go for some finished cuts over here right now and I like to leave them dead cross grain. Uh, you might find that you like them you know in a different direction but uh, anyway pick one and go with it. So I'm just putting my score right up on the line. And over here we don't have to be too careful because this is going to be coming down right here anyway. We'll be redrawing those lines in just, just a minute. But back here you can go ahead and finish this area. down to my line that I've drawn that's about 7 sixteenths inch below the top right now.
trying to do finished cuts back here, so taking my time. Of course, now turning my skew, my squirt this way to get a better cut. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking the score once again beyond the point of diminishing returns with what I'm doing right here. Typically I would go uh, to the Travisher at this point, and, uh, but by taking it further we're going to move that point of diminishing returns because we're going to be able to use our score you know, much, much better. And, uh, down I've got this back part finished and so while you, while you aren't looking I'm going to switch to the other side because you wouldn't be able to see it anyway and carve out this side right here all right so now <clears throat> I've got the bowl carved out all the way down to 7 16 below the top right here and now I need to take this down to that level and where I want to end is just a little bit in front of this post hole. So maybe just draw you a line there. It, it's really right at this corner, right, uh, right there where you start the draw knife work, where the spindle deck comes around and hits where you're first going to cut with the draw knife. And of course it doesn't really matter exactly, exactly where. And the best way I found to do that is to pick back up the jack plane that I used earlier to uh, flatten the seat out with. And this is, if, if, if you haven't watched that one, this is just the most common plane that's out there. Uh, the least expensive one of the old planes, and because all the carpenters had them. And uh, maybe, I, I don't know, I guess that's called, why well, it's called a jack. Somebody would know that, but, but, but not me. Uh, and I've got the blade slightly cambered, so it cuts fast, but it'll leave a little bit of a scallop, which is fine for this chair. Uh, so, uh, so if you start down here and establish that slight angle, then you keep backing up, and maybe you can kind of time it to where your last cut starts on the little line you drew right here and ends on the line down there. I mean that's kind of what you want to do. This other side, uh, we don't need to show you that, and then I'll come back with the pattern to redraw it. Um, okay, so <clears throat> when I got over here to this side and got ready to do it, I realized that it's much better if you saw that off, and that's what I've done with this chair before, but you know, I forget, I'm filming and I forget to do it. 
I'm sure there were some of you that were watching this that said, you know, it'd be a lot better if you solved that off first. And uh, so you're right if you were thinking that. Because then you got a lot less to plane right there. <clears throat> and uh, so I've got those sides sewn out. I've redrawn the pattern on top. Now I'm going to take the score and I'm going to carve right out to those lines. And this whole inside part is going to be finished then at that, at that point. Now, I have thought about, after making this chair numerous times, that you could get a pretty good look if you had a, uh, uh, like a butternut seed or some, some sort of wood that, that is prettier than, than pine, and you wanted to show that off, that, uh, that you could go on and finish the seat and scrape the seat and sand the seat, just the inside portion right here, and leave the rest of the chair as is with all these draw knife marks uh, on it, all these cuts and all these facets on it, and I think that contrast could look could look real good. But uh, we'll be leaving it with the score uh, finish on it, and uh, uh, let's see. And I did realize a minute ago that uh, the score I was using needed to be sharpened just a little bit more, but uh, uh, so I, so I grabbed I grabbed another one instead of sharpening that one. And so, so anyway, so we'll. You might even be able to hear that the sound of this one is saying I'm sharper. Too. Gotta to watch it. Almost dug in with me. So this little corner right here is not like made for the score. So just get in there the best you can. switch and get this side right here and the next time you see me we're going to be getting the draw knife and beveling off the sides.